When the International Criminal Court was founded in 2002, it declared itself to be in a global fight to end impunity as the world's first permanent international criminal court. Well, for the most part, that's been wishful thinking, especially in the context of Palestine. The ICC investigates and prosecutes individuals for alleged war crimes and crimes against humanity. Currently, 123 countries are states parties to the Rome Statute of the ICC. The fact that Israel is not a party to the Rome Statute is irrelevant because its nationals can be subject to the court's jurisdiction for crimes committed in Palestine. Once Palestine status was upgraded from observer entity to non-member observer state, it was able to accede to the Rome Statute in 2014. And in 2018, Palestine referred to the prosecutor the Palestine situation since June 13, 2014, with no end date. It took the ICC nearly five years, but eventually in 2019, it determined that the criteria for opening an investigation had been met. And finally, on February 5th, 2021, the ICC decided that the court's territorial jurisdiction extends to the occupied Palestinian territories, namely Gaza and the West Bank, including East Jerusalem. Therefore, investigating Israel for war crimes and crimes against humanity can begin. Unfortunately, the U.S. protects Israel from accountability. The U.S. State Department made clear its position that the U.S. and Israel should not be subject to the court's jurisdiction. The U.S. position is simply wrong and, quite frankly, shameful. The U.S. attack on the ICC was launched in September 2018 and included banning the ICC and its personnel, such as judges and prosecutors, effectively targeting the credibility of the court and the independence of its prosecutor. But it did not end there. By June 2020, the Trump administration revoked the visa of the ICC prosecutor and other staff members of her office. Trump took it to the extreme when, under the pretext of a national emergency, issued an executive order authorizing asset freezes and imposing bans on ICC officials, employees, agents, as well as immediate family members. The order also declared that the ICC must respect the decision of the United States as opposed to the other way around. While President Biden revoked Trump's executive order, he essentially accepted the status quo ante by declaring that the U.S. continued to object to the International Criminal Court's assertions of jurisdiction over non-state parties such as the United States and its allies, which includes who? You guessed it, Israel. But wait, there's more. Some members of Congress decided to join the climate of selective outrage by showcasing their blatant hypocrisy regarding the ICC. In early March 2022, a Senate resolution sponsored by Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina and co-sponsored by both parties praised the ICC, describing it as an international tribunal that seeks to uphold the rule of law, especially in areas where no rule of law exists. Even President Biden himself labeled Putin a war criminal and called for a war crimes trial. The selective outrage is glaring. A quick comparison will illustrate the selective human rights focus and double standard of the West. From March to April 2022, 43 states, including EU member states, Australia, Canada, Iceland, New Zealand, Norway, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom, requested that the, that the ICC investigate alleged war crimes and crimes against humanity in Ukraine. The ICC's newest prosecutor, Karim Khan, immediately accepted the request, as he should have. However, pursuing justice and accountability in Ukraine, while explicitly opposing or silently rejecting the same in Palestine, is to render Israel immune from prosecution and contribute to the dehumanization of the Palestinian people. While the ICC has jurisdiction over the crime of genocide and aggression, crimes against humanity and war crimes with respect to Palestine, the prosecutor will be focusing on willful killings, torture, inhuman treatment, or serious injury to body or health, deprivation of the right to a fair trial, among other crimes. However, the prosecutor's investigation must expand to include other crimes, such as the crime against humanity of apartheid. The decision to investigate Israeli crimes is a great first step, but that's all it is, a step. 
Accountability will only come if we pressure the international community to demand justice. We must be at the forefront of the Palestinian struggle for justice and liberation.